Hey, this is Rick, and this is another HTML5 game development tutorial using the TypeScript programming language. Uh, if you're not familiar with TypeScript, but are familiar with JavaScript, uh, it's the same thing, except you can use a lot of features today that you can't use until uh, the web basically adopts JavaScript, uh, later features of JavaScript. Uh, it also has typing, but you don't have to use the typing if you don't want to, but I am using the typing. Anyway, um, today we're going to be doing animated sprites, and uh, we are building off of a couple tutorials uh, that I did previously. Uh, we're building off of some TypeScript tutorials, or not TypeScript, we're building off of some Texture Atlas tutorials, uh, as well as uh, a keyboard input tutorial. Uh, I have those uh, on YouTube and on my website uh, if you want to go back to the previous versions. Also, all the code is available on my website, TypeScriptGames.com. It's MIT licensed, so you can do anything you want with it. Uh, you don't have to attribute me, uh, although that is appreciated. Um, but basically, you can do whatever you want with the code except sue me. So as long as you're not intending to sue me, uh, you're welcome to take the code and do whatever you want with it. So anyway, this is where we were at the end of the last tutorial. We had our game loop, and we were drawing, uh, drawing an image from our texture atlas. Um, and, you know, in this atlas, we have these frames uh, that were loaded. Um, so we also have this keyboard input class. And I go into how to do that with a whole tutorial uh, that I have already in video and, you know, written form online uh, available on my website, TypescriptGames.com. <clears throat> uh, we use this rectangle <clears throat> class to find, the, um, to find the location within our texture atlas. And here's our texture atlas class, which basically loads up a JSON file. It loads up uh, an image file that, uh, if you're not familiar with texture atlases, it looks something like this, you know, where all the images are together in one block. There's a JSON file <clears throat> that goes along with that. And the JSON file looks like this, uh, where it's got basically the images as well as a frame where it tells you where in that JSON file the particular image is located. Um, so that's how the texture atlas works in a nutshell. Um, there's a full tutorial on it on my website. Uh, we have some, you know, we can move these things up and down, you know, with these, uh, uh, basically with, uh, with these functions, those tie into, you know, callbacks that I have in my keyboard, uh, class. Um, so, you know, here's our initialization, uh, method. And we actually don't need this image anymore. We can get rid of that. Um, that was from a previous tutorial, no longer being used. You know, so when our uh, when our website loads up, you know, once it's finished loading, we grab the canvas, uh, we grab the context from the canvas, we initialize our keyboard input, we grab the texture atlas, and then we set up the callbacks for our keyboard input. Uh, and we no longer need this game loop guy there because the game loop is going to get called once the texture atlas finishes loading. So anyway, that's a quick wrap up of what we had done up to this point. There are full tutorials uh, if you want to check out TypescriptGames.com uh, on all of that stuff. Uh, but if you've already seen it, we're about to dive into what's next. Okay, so we're doing uh, animated sprites next. So uh, the first thing we need is an animated sprite class. Um, and we're actually, in order to have an animated sprite class, we're going to change out that rectangle class um, to a frame class because really we want a little more information out of our texture atlas than just the uh, x, y, width, and height information that we grabbed in the last, uh, in the last tutorial. So well, let me grab this guy and I'm going to get rid of all of this and I'm going to replace it with a frame. So this frame class is pretty much the same thing, except it has an offset X and an offset Y uh, parameter. And the reason for that is I'm using trimming uh, when I create my texture atlas. So if there's a lot of uh, basically transparent pixels on the side, let's say I created, you know, um, a bunch of uh, images but I, I, I want them to trim out all those transparent pixels because that will make my texture atlas a lot larger. Um, however, it'll also mean that your object's not going to be perfectly centered. 
if you just render that um, that image. So we have to keep track of this offset, and we're going to have to grab the offset of the X and Y uh, uh, values out of that texture atlas. So if I open back up the JSON file, um, I believe it's I believe it's this one. So you're going to have to like. Uh, this is what the source size actually was and this is what the width like was before you know it was trimmed and this is what it is now so you're going to have to figure out okay well how much should i how much does that mean i have to offset where i'm placing uh, my image for it to be centered so it'll be the difference between you know these values so that's where that ox and oy are coming from now instead of using C rectangle now we're gonna to have to change every reference to C rectangle to C frame so we got a couple more down here C frame and C frame now I think is that gonna be okay okay so this is just assuming the offset is zero and zero um, but let me, uh, let me go through and look at the different of uh, the other differences in our texture atlas. So we still have our load complete, our atlases and our image names. This is, this is where we're loading up our JSON file, uh, setting our callback, which will be the game loop. So the game loop won't start until everything is finished loading. Uh, here we're using XHR to load up our JSON file. Then we're reading the JSON. Uh, the data is coming in here. And now we're going to have to add two more parameters when we create that frame. So we're going to have to put a comma here. And we're going to have to put in two more, two more variables when we create that frame. And that'll be OX and OY. And that'll be the site source X or the sprite source X and the sprite source Y, which is, uh, let me open this back. So it'll be, it'll be this value and this value. And those should be like the differences in terms of the width and height. So once we grab, you know, this, we could pass in this as the offset X and the offset Y. Um, so this, you know, is basically that will, that will allow us to render everything in the right place. Okay, so now we need our animated sprite class. So let me grab our animated sprite class. Paste it in here. Let's step through what we're doing. All right, so basically we're gonna wrap up um, everything that is needed to draw a sprite into one class. So if we want to have lots of sprites, we can draw them using this animated sprite class. Um, we could also have a regular sprite class, which you know would wrap up just drawing an image to a canvas within it. Um, so as a constructor, uh, we're passing in uh, the initial x and y values, you know, for where this guy is going to be located. Uh, a frame count, like how many frames is this going to have within our atlas, um, the atlas itself, and a sequence name. So if you look at um, if you look at our JSON, and you look at asteroids, so we have asteroid zero zero, asteroid zero one, asteroid zero two, asteroid zero three. So the sequence name is just going to be asteroid. And this 00.png, 01.png, that's all going to be appended onto it based on the frame number. So it, it goes sequence name, frame number, .png. So we're basically going to assume that all the files are PNG files. Uh, you could, of course, tweak this to support other file types, but basically this code is only supporting PNG. So... Uh, we set our frame count, we set our atlas, we set our sequence name, and 
then uh, within this, we're going to have to draw it. So we create our draw function, and this is going to need to be called in our game loop to draw our animated sprite. So every frame, we are going to add one to the current frame. Um, now you could do this if you wanted to every other frame. You could, you know, all you'd have to do is tweak, tweak this. So if you wanted to, you could have a uh, basically a variable which, you know, uh, was a boolean, let's say, and you know there was on frames and off frames. So if you wanted the animation to happen at half of the frame rate, you could change that uh, within here. You could change it to whatever frame rate you wanted to, uh, but we're just going with every time we draw this, we're going to uh, animate this sprite at the same frame rate that the game is, is moving in. So we add one to the current frame, and then we check to see if the current frame is greater than or equal to the frame count, and if it is, we set it back to zero. Um, and then within this, uh, we're going to you know translate it to its current x, y coordinates, and then draw it. And drawing it is basically going into the atlas and getting the frame and getting the x value of that frame. You know, and this is just like just like we were doing uh, with just rendering out a texture atlas. But the difference is we're going to be calling this get frame string. And that's just basically going to um, it's basically going to check to see if the current frame is, you know, greater than nine. And if it is, we don't need to do anything other than just put together the sequence name, the current frame, and dot .png. Uh, but if it's less than nine, we have to put a zero in front of it. Um, now, this only supports up to 100 frames. Um, if you have something, if you have a game where you want to have uh, an animated sequence that has 1,000 frames, you could do that, but you'd have to tweak this. So, you know, it would also, um, it would have, you know, if you're less than 10, append two zeros if you're less than 100, you know, else if you're less than 100, append one, and, you know, else if, you, you know, if you're, else if just put it together. So if you want to, you could support up, you could tweak this to support up to a thousand frames. Uh, we're supporting up to 99 frames or up to a hundred frames with this code. Uh, so um, it's basically just getting that frame out of the Atlas, just like we were before. The only difference is we're gonna keep, we're gonna have it within this uh, class, everything is going to be within this class, and uh, we're going to animate it by incrementing the current frame. Okay, so now I believe we have to change, uh, we're going to have to add an animated sprite in here, because we don't, we're not actually creating an animated sprite just yet. Uh, so we're going to create this asteroid using this atlas. Oh, I need to define that variable sprite too. I didn't do that. So let me put this guy here. So we have a variable sprite that's an animated sprite. And then we're uh, creating a new animated sprite, you know, setting its x and y coordinates to 100, uh, frame count to 35, because they're, you know, if you went through and you counted up uh, the number of asteroids, uh, in this guy, there'd be 35. See, we have within our atlas, 35 different asteroids in various stages of rotation. Um, so now we have our sprite, but we are not yet drawing it. So we have to go up to the game loop, which is up here, and we can get rid of, we can get rid of all of this because we're now going to be drawing that through the sprite class. Draw. All right, so that looks a lot cleaner there. Um, and if you wanted a bunch of different animated sprites or regular sprites to draw, uh, you could set this up um, so, that, uh, so that you had like an array and it could loop through your array and just call the sprite.draw on every sprite that's within your array. Uh, we've done stuff like that uh, in other tutorials, um, but right now I'm just gonna draw the one, the one asteroid. And, oh, you know, the other thing, if we want this guy to move, we set up all these callbacks. 
ship left, ship up. We were initially moving the ship, uh, but now we don't want to move the ship, but we're going to leave them called ship up because I'm kind of lazy. Uh, and instead we'll do sprite.y um, and this will change when we you know push up, down, left, right, it'll change the position of our sprite, or at least should. All right, let's run this guy and see what happens. Gonna work? There we are. Okay, and oops, not sure what happened there. All right, now we can move our little asteroid around. And you can see he's animated. And that's about all there is to animated sprites. Now, you might have to go back if you didn't see the Texture Atlas tutorial and check that out. Um, you know, or the keyboard input if you're not sure how the keyboard input works. Uh, but yeah, that's that's basically all there is to creating an animated sprite in TypeScript. Uh, hope you liked it, and please subscribe. Um, and let me know if uh, if there's anything uh, I can do differently. <clears throat> I'm still fairly fairly new to these tutorials. Oh, excuse me, one second. <clears throat> excuse me, still fairly new to these tutorials. So uh, you can hit me up on Twitter at TypeScript Games. Um, or on YouTube, and just let me know what you think. Let me know if there's anything that could be more clear.